Okay, so Amiri is up, and Amiri is still hanging at the town square. So let's see what she finds in the corner, a battered chest that nobody seems to notice. So she comes up to it and says, hey, let's check that out. Strength melee, she can break that thing open. And she's going to try with an eight strength melee check. So Amiri gets a d12 plus two to her strength check. And she can bury a card from her hand at a d10. What do you get for this? You get a 1d4 random items for the box. Mm. I think she's just going to go for it like this. She needs a six to get to seven. So she gets it. A nine. One D four random items for the box to your hand. All right, so she gets to roll a D four. So she gets four random items from the box to her hand. Wow, okay. Okay, so here's the item deck from the box. We'll cut it after I shuffled a bit. And she gets four items in her hand from here. So she gets the boots of elven kind. Good for acrobatics and stealth. She gets a potion of fortitude, a crown of charisma, and the bracers of protection. Wow, not a bad haul. The problem is she can't keep all that stuff in her hand. So we have to decide what's going on here because she can only have four items. So she has to discard down. Um, she could also discard to explore during your turn, so she might as well discard one of these that she's not going to want. Um, I guess she'll discard the Boots of Elven kind for now. Actually, she's going to discard the Long Spear because she already has the weapon that she wants. Um, so we'll keep one of these. Probably the Braces of Protection we'll keep for sure. So we'll put that in that slot, and these three she can still work decide what we want to do as we go on in this end of this turn so she's gonna explore again and find a long sword sitting there strength melee six so plus two melee d12 strength so she needs a four she gets a 12 so she gets the long sword which she doesn't really need at this moment so she could discard a card from her hand to explore again so let's discard the long sword and keep going at the town square and finds a troubadour um, ally which is useful for dexterity or charisma checks and we have to add two to these checks so her dex is six and her charisma is six so charisma will be easier but she also has these cool the crown of charisma remember um, I can add one die to my diplomacy check, which I don't have diplomacy. I'm doing it as a charisma. Or I could recharge this card to succeed at your diplomacy check. Hmm, so what does that mean? Well, I have a diplomacy. Actually, I can do any check. I just get a d4 if I'm not skilled in it. So I don't have to do charisma. I can do diplomacy, and only I get a d4. But if I use this, say, and I'm doing the diplomacy... I could recharge it to automatically succeed, so I'll do that. Yeah, pretty sure on that. Um, so, you could do any check and just get a d4, even if you're like unskilled. So I can recharge that card, and I can get automatically succeed and get the Troubadour, who I will immediately discard, <laughs> to explore again. And, oh, the dog ally. Wisdom survival. She actually has survival. D6 plus 3. Um, so she gets plus 3 with the D6. But this is an ally, so she needs 7. So she's a 4. And gets a 5. So that's 8. So she also gets the dog. She's just killing it. Perception or explore location. Um, I think she's going to get rid... I like to hang out of the dog. <laughs> so 
She has all these options, and she has a lot of cards in her hand, so I'm not worried about health. We're ripping through the town square, so she could discard the dog, or what are these items? We need to banish a card from our hand. Banish to close the town square. Let me just get rid of forever. So let's discard the dog for now to explore again. And this is the last card, so this has to be the poison trap. There we go. And we need a dex disable of five to beat that. Um, acrobatic stealth. Um, I hope none of these gave me dexed. Yep, non-combat dex. I should have freaking kept him around. Uh, I was, didn't think ahead. She doesn't have disable. She's a D6 on dexed. So she could technically get it. Oh, that just sucks. Strength melee or contract, she can bury a card. Well, the good thing is, even no matter what happens here, she'll be able to attempt to close the gate. Because after the, this is the last card. So, I guess we'll just have to go for it. And we have all these other things for damage, so. It's a dex disable 5, her dex to 6. So she, it's not over, she can get a 5. Or a 1. Alright, so because we, it's undefeated, discard the top card of your deck. Alright, so we discard the Blessing of the Gods. Then, we need to succeed at a con or fort 7 check, or be dealt damage. So actually, the, we have the potion of Fortitude. A fort 7. Banish this card and choose a character at your location to succeed at a fortitude check. Banish. I think we'll do that. We'll just banish this card and succeed at the fort check so we don't take any damage. And now we have to banish a card from our hand to close the town square. So we're going to banish the Boots of Elvenkind. They're nice, but I'd rather keep the energy resistance potion. I'd rather keep everything else I have here. Uh, yeah, so we'll get rid of those, but we do close the location. So that's pretty awesome. And our turn is done. And we, already, we still got four cards, so we don't have to go into our health. So not bad, not bad. All right, next turn, Sila. <sighs> Sila is still chilling at the city gates. And runs into a zombie. This city gates are just not, they're not doing a good job protecting, apparently. Immune to mental and poison. Half the damage dealt by the zombie. But if he's undefeated, each other character the location summons and encounters a zombie. Okay. So the zombie actually does half the damage that it would normally do. But if there was other people here, they would all have to fight zombies. So it's almost like the zombies, you fight more of them, even they don't do as much damage on their own. Okay, I get it. And, uh, okay, so short sword time for a girl. Does she have any bonuses against Undead? No, that's the cleric. Uh, well, okay, so she examined the top card of her location deck. It's not a boon, obviously, so I always forget that. Okay. So, uh, plus two, D8, plus two. So, D8... Plus two, plus one d six for a short sword. Okay, and this thing's got an a nine. Okay, and she could discard the top card deck to add another d six, which I think she'll do. If it's a blessing, she could recharge it. It is nice, so she recharges the blessing and gets a another d six. So as usual, I can switch this up, so I'll make plus two to a roll with all these. We need a seven. And we definitely got it. So the zombie gets taken care of. Alright. And she's slowly going through this deck because she doesn't have a lot of options to keep going right now. Um, she can cure, but she doesn't really need to yet. So she's just going to chill. So we go into Ezrin. 
who was at the apothecary, but now he's moving. He's going to check out the village house, the only place we haven't gone. So let's check out the village house. Although a far cry from the mansions of wealthy nobles or the keeps of the powerful lords, this cozy house has a look of a comfortable and reasonably well-kept home. Warm light pours from the windows, gilding the silhouettes of the occupants going about their lives inside, and colorful bird feeders and wind chimes give it a bit of a personality. Sounds like a great place. So what's going on here? When attempting a check to acquire an ally, you may instead recharge a card to automatically acquire the ally. Oh, that's pretty sweet. So this is ally heaven. There's three here. Okay. So Ezrin is going to check. And there's a troubadour. So this is a dexterity of charisma. Checks. And his deck sucks at six, and his charisma is no better at six. So, and actually we had to add two to those, but because of the village house, we could actually recharge a card to automatically acquire it. So let's do that. Let's recharge a quarter staff. We're never using that with him anyway. <laughs> so we recharge it so it actually doesn't lose any health. It just goes to the bottom of our deck. And we get to take the Troubadour, and the reason why is because we could immediately discard him then to explore again. So that's what I want to do. And here's a mercenary at the village house. Okay. Mercenaries are all over the place. That's a D10. That's a 10 difficulty. Um, we definitely have ways to get rid of this guy. We're going to acid arrow him. So that's a d12 plus 2 for our arcane. So uh, plus 2, d12, and then plus 2, d4 on top of that for our spell. And um, that's it. So we need an 8 on these roll, this roll to beat this guy. And we get an 8 on the D12 alone. 6 more, so we definitely take care of them. So the mercenary is gone. And because we played a spell... Actually, first we could try to do an arcade check to recharge this card. So that's our D12 plus 2. So we need a 4. And we get an 8, so we recharge Acid, acid Arrow. Nice. And then... Because we did a spell with an arcane trait, we can examine the top. If it's a spell, we put it in our hand, and it is not. It's a potion resist energy resistance. Okay. So we don't have any way to keep going here right now. So we get a stop. And so that is one, two, three, four. Potion five. And then braces of protection six. All right. So Ezrin's done. So we're moving back to Amiri, who is hanging out at the town square for no reason whatsoever. So she knows I see has been having trouble at the town gates. So she's going to head over there to try to help her out. Um. And the eyes of the eagle. Interested. Perception checks or, or recharge it to succeed at your perception check. Awesome. Wisdom perception 5. Uh, she only has a d6 for that. Nobody's going to help, so she just needs to get a 5. And she gets a 1. Damn, that could have been nice too. Could have been useful. So, she fails though. It was not a combat check, so we don't have to shuffle in a monster. Alright, so Mary's done. She went over there, but didn't get much help. So, Sila is going to um, examine the top card. If it's a boon, she could put it at the bottom of her deck. And it is not. It is actually the villain, Pillbug Potaker. And he is hanging in the city gates. No wonder there's so many monsters here. All damage dealt by Pillbug is poison damage that may not be reduced. Uh-oh. Have any happy pillbugs turned up lately? Customer at the pillbugs pantry requesting poison. <laughs> okay, so we need an eleven check for Sila. Um, so 
see if I can help at all. No, I don't think so. Uh, let's see, pill bug. So we need a. We gotta try to take this dude out big time, of course. So we get a plus two to our strength with a d8. And then we get another d6 for our short sword. And then we can discard the top card of our deck to add a d6. If it's a blessing, we recharge it. And it is a blessing, awesome. So we charge that to get another d6. And we really have nothing else to do. Nobody has a blessing that can give us or anything else. So we basically need a nine out of these dice because we got a plus two going. And we got 11. 13 total. So Pillbug gets hit. He gets wounded, but he can escape because we have an open location. But when you defeat the villain, the location he is at automatically gets closed. So we look at what's here. Masterwork 2. As long as no other villains, which there shouldn't be. There's a longsword plus one, though. Dang, that would have been nice. Um, this automatically gets closed because the villain was defeated. And then when the villain is defeated, you, you take the amount minus one. So there's one zero, so we take zero extra cards out, and he automatically gets put in the village house. So we have to shuffle them in. Nice. So Sila, while at the city gates, notices Pillbug and attacks him and wounds him, but he escapes her, and being an alchemist, he's able to quaff a quick potion to heal himself up as he makes a break down some alleyways and gets away. And I screwed up because I could have had Ezrin temporarily close the village house so he couldn't escape and we would have won but I didn't think about it because I'm stupid and all we would have to do is banish a card to immediately close it and this game would be over now but I didn't do it and I can't go back oh that's so frustrating I'm still trying to remember learning the game but that's an obvious thing I could have done oh all right so Sila's done so she has all her cards, so we flip over, and now Ezrin is here, and they warn Ezrin that Pillbug is here. Everybody knows of our three. Pillbug has escaped into the village houses, so we're searching around for him. And we have Caltrops that come up. Four decks to save. This is good for evading or banishing monsters. So his dex is a six. He's not going to add anything to that. Try to get them. Three doesn't get them. The cow traps get put go away. Decides against them. And he's unable to continue his search for Pillbug at the village house, though. So his turn is over. He didn't use any cards. Alright. So Amiri shows up. Everybody knows he's here. We just gotta get him. And a battered chest for a Miri strength melee of eight. There's another one. She had one earlier. All right, so plus two to her strength. And then her melee is a d12. So she needs a six to get this. And she gets an eight. All right, so this is, we had this earlier. 1d4 random items. Last time she got four randoms. This time she gets four randoms again. Wow, crazy. All right, shuffled up the items again. So last time this was really good for Miri because she was at the town square where you could just discard a card from your hand to keep exploring. So even though she had all those items that were useful to keep exploring here, she's just gonna have more cards than she can deal with. She has to discard them, but she can't give you know get to them at the end of the scenario. But all right, so she gets a token of remembrance. Nice. To recharge a spell from your discard pile. Wow, that's really good for a mage. A spyglass. Good for perception checks, I assume. And looking at the top cards of a deck. Okay. A luck stone. Good for add one to your check. Okay. 
If you fail a check by one, you may bury this card to succeed. Interesting. And Thieves Tools. We've seen those before. Right, so these go back in the deck, in the box. And the problem here is we have no way to keep going. So all these cards are pretty much going to get discarded. I, I want to keep what she has. So, you know, she doesn't really need an amulet. Well, she could if she fights a magic. Oh, but this is magic. And the Amulet of Mighty Fist really isn't that useful to her at the moment. It's actually more useful for the... It's incredibly useful for the monk. Um, I think she's going to actually discard the Amulet of Mighty Fists. Discard the Thieves' Tools. She might keep that Luck Stone. For now. Because it adds one to your check. So if she fails by one, she can always use it. So... Yeah, I think she's going to keep the Luck Stone. Okay, so her turn's done, though. The battered chest got some... Along That's eight items out of two chests for a Mary. All right. So Sila is coming. She's hanging out. She did not start her turn here, so she cannot look at the top card. And it's Pillbug. She's up back. So not only does Sila... So as she's rummaging through the house, Sila notices Pillbuck again. He notices her and knows she's the one that got him the first time. And he's a little upset that she's back. So she's here to put an end to it. To his poison ways. Um, okay. So, plus two to her strength check. With an eight. Alright, yes. And then she gets a d6 for her short sword. She is going to discard the top of her deck to get another d6. If it's a blessing, it is. She puts, she refreshes it. Or recharges it. And then to go for broke, she's actually going to um, discard the short sword to add another d6 to the check. She really wants to end this guy's ways. So he is an 11, she needs a 9 with 2d6s and a d8. So hopefully this is good enough. And she gets a 11. 13 total. Pillbug is defeated by Sila twice. She went after him. So Pillbug is done. The village house automatically closes as the investigation for the poisoner has been concluded and uh, there was a blessing of the gods an acolyte a poison trap a mace an augury and a guard here but the heroes succeed to take down the poisoner pillbug potiker as the community is once again safe Awesome. So we got through that pretty easily, actually. That was fun. This game is a lot of fun. And the poison pill is done. So our last um, scenario in the Beginner's Perils of the Lost Coast is Black Fang's Dungeon, which obviously is referencing these slaughtered livestock and death soaring on shadowy wings part of the uh, background. And if we get through that, each character gains a skill feat. So everybody gets, somebody actually gets to level up. But because we got through the poison pill, each character draws a random weapon from the box. Pretty nice. So let's do that real quick. Okay, random weapon from the box for each character. Now, of course, some of these characters... Well, actually, no, I shouldn't say that because Ezran could use a weapon. He can have one weapon. Yes, so he could use a weapon. So he might be able to find something here. But at the end, characters can give cards to other characters too. So Amiri gets a light crossbow. Okay. So put that in her hand, her deck. Sila grabs a heavy crossbow. So we're just going like ranged happy here. And Ezrin gets a spiked chain. That's a weapon? That's oh, like a whip. Nice. Okay, so not the, nothing plus one or anything I was hoping for. It's a couple crossbows and a spiked chain is what we uh, got there. 
All right, so we're done. So we have to. I have to go through these decks, try to figure out what I'm going to do with it, who gets what, make sure they have 15 cards for the next um, scenario, and we'll continue on with uh, Black Fang's dungeon. So thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you later.